Well, I'm so blessed to be here with you this morning. My name is Paul Gates. I have the incredible privilege of running an incredible ministry called River of Life Mission. Uh, we are 501c3 as a church, but my congregation is the homeless, people living in the desperation of the streets. And last year, I had the privilege of sharing what God has done at River of Life. And actually, this morning, I'm going to share just a little bit more, and it really ties into the message this morning. Uh, but I'm so excited to be with you this morning. Waxer and I have known each other since we were in our 20s. So I feel like one love has always been a part of my life. Hi, Tomiko. I see Tomiko back there, one of our amazing staff. Um, and uh, so one love has just always held such a special place in my heart, knowing Waxer all the way back into my 20s. Uh, I was in youth ministry uh, in a place called San Clemente, California, and Waxer would come in and teach when the lead pastor of the church I was the youth pastor at was out of town. And even in our 20s, I was like, man, that guy has a teaching gift, amen? So you are led by a man that I have the utmost respect for. One of my other really close friends is a guy named Ricky Page. If you guys remember several months ago, Ricky Page was here. He had a ladder analogy. He had Myola's name on it, which he spelled completely wrong. I don't know if he corrected that for Sunday morning services. Um, but Ricky Page is one of my closest of friends, one of my best buddies. Another one of my close friends is Jaden Lavick. So Jaden Lavick, who's led worship here, he's a recording artist, um, one of our closest friends. He stays with us. We live on the North Shore, and i um, really excited to be with you here this morning. You know, one of the things as we start this morning, many churches around the world are praying for Israel and I get the privilege of praying for Israel. I've been to Israel twice through my life. If you've never gone, go. Um, right now, obviously, is not a great time to go, and that's why it makes our prayers that much more important for Israel. Also, my wife and I have made friends with an Israeli young woman on the North Shore who is back in Israel right now for several weddings. Um, we've been sharing Jesus with her for a long time. My wife, just about a month ago, gave her her first Old Testament and New Testament Bible. And so we have a friend who is in Israel right now um, that we have been sharing Jesus with. But would you join me in prayer as we start this morning for Israel and for the people of Israel? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this morning, and I thank you that um, of all people, I was asked to pray for Israel. Being in Israel changed my life. One of my closest friends runs a ministry to Israel. The surfing population there, the people of Israel. Israel is a country that is always in the limelight of our world, and there's a reason for that. Israel is your people. Father, this morning we pray for Israel as a country, but most importantly we pray for the people of Israel, that you would protect them, that you would comfort them during this very challenging season, God, I pray for my friend Danielle that you would protect her as she's there in Israel. And lastly, we pray for Israel and the people of Israel that they would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God, I pray for my friend Danielle that she would come to know Jesus Christ as, our, as her Lord and Savior. We've been talking to her about the Old Testament that you know and love talks over and over about Jesus. So God, we pray for Israel, we pray for the people of Israel, that you would protect them, that you would bless them, and that they would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We pray all these things in your powerful name, in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. If you're interested, one of my good friends, Todd Moorhead, runs a ministry called Grafted Ministries, and it's all about ministering into Israel. He does have several movies that he's produced alongside it called Promised Land. Tom Curran is in one of those videos. It's about the surfing community in Israel. They're amazing uh, movies. You can actually get them on Amazon and most of the movie stations now. And then he has Bible study books to go along with it. 
And what he always encourages us as the church is to remember the people of Israel, the country of Israel, and get to know Israel in a way that you can continue to be moved in compassion of prayer and sharing Jesus with the people of Israel. So graftedministries.org, you can get on there and check it out. Well, we know the men are at the men's retreat, amen? All right. What's funny about that is uh, they are out at Mokalea, and it's a half a mile from my house. So I'm right there. So last night, I actually told uh, everybody at the Saturday night service that I was tempted to drive over and check in on the men. How many of you guys would have thought that would be a good idea, right? Check in on the men. Um, the funny thing is my wife and I, uh, some of our best friends work at the Salvation Army camp that the men are at. So I thought, you know, maybe I should call Joe and Bree and check in on the, the men of one love, okay? But I didn't. But I thought what I'd do this morning with you is do a little survey. How many, how many of you guys know our world is full of surveys now, right? All over the place. You walk into a store, there's surveys. Uh, social media, there's surveys. One of the things, um, you know, I'm a simple guy. I think I told you last time I was born in Papua New Guinea. My parents were Wycliffe Bible translators. I was actually born in the jungles of Papua New Guinea, right? And so I'm just kind of simple. I'm a surfer, right? So I need things really simple, amen? Any surfers in the house need things really? So whenever there's a survey of one to 10, I'm just as confused as heck. I'm like, one to 10? Like, it, well, so now a lot of surveys are one to five, right? Which is a little bit better. But what I wanna do this morning with you is I wanna do a survey with you based on the men, men at the men's retreat. We're just gonna have a little bit of fun and we're gonna go from zero to three. Now, come on, are you guys with me? A survey from zero to three better than one to 10? Whoa, one to five, okay, it's better. One to three, zero to three, okay? So what I want you to do, I'm all about involvement. As you can tell, I'm one of those spazzy pastors, you know, right? But everybody put up a hand, okay? Everybody's gotta put up a hand. We're gonna get involved first thing this morning, okay? And you guys did it right, you're facing it towards me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a survey on the men's retreat from zero to three, right? Uh, all the youth in the house, you guys are gonna love this one, okay? Maybe you have a dad at the men's retreat, right? So what you're gonna do is we're, we're gonna do this survey of one to three and you're gonna give the men of one love a point. So if, if you agree with what I'm gonna say on this survey of, of zero to three or one to three, you're just gonna put up one finger, okay? And then if it goes, if you go two, you can go two fingers, possibly. But the max, we're gonna go to three fingers, right? Everybody's hand up? I know, we're tired, Sunday morning, but this will get us going. You can, you can switch hands in the middle of, okay, here it is. So the men of one love will get a point if they are all behaved. How many of you guys think they're gonna all be behaved? We got a couple fingers, couple fingers. We had a couple fingers last night. One finger, one finger, okay, just one finger there. One finger, okay? One finger, so, so you guys got three, okay, wait. One, just one, okay? Now you can possibly put up a second finger if you think there were no weird noises after lights out. <laughs> Nobody put up a finger there, all right, good job. Okay, and the third one, this one is one you're gonna have to project. This is an estimation. This might be if you have a husband who's on the men's retreat, right? Maybe you have a, just a friend who's on the men's retreat, but he's a roommate. Where this might get really funny is, is there anybody that's engaged to somebody on the men's retreat? Anybody engaged to some? Okay, okay, go ahead and put your hands back up. Okay, I, I see lots of one fingers there. So the last one is we will give the men a point if you think they will smell better when they come home than when they left, put up a finger. We got a lot of ones, I would have given them a zero because I don't think they're all, okay, you guys can put your hands down. Ah, oh, that is my pathetic attempt to be funny, just so you know. But I'm one of those guys, I don't wanna just pull up, we gotta have some fun, right? But the main thing we are hoping, and I already heard actually a report from the men's retreat, the rain stayed down, they got to have a bonfire last night, and God was surveying their hearts, amen? In a way that the Holy Spirit was stirring inside of them to see what God can do in their lives. And so that's uh, what we're excited about, the men out at Mokalea, half a mile from my house. Today we're gonna to be in Psalm 77. 
And uh, there's going to be Bibles. Were the Bibles already handed out? I think we're going to hand out some Bibles. So if you need a Bible, just raise your hand and somebody will hand you a Bible. And if you're in one of the Bibles, the One Love Bibles, we're going to be looking at Psalm 77 this morning. And it's found on page 393. So if you're getting handed one of these Bibles, and I do this every time I preach, I want to give the page number because maybe it's your first time grabbing a Bible. Maybe, you know, you, you know the Bible relatively, but then the person right next to you is like, bam, I got Psalm 77. And you, you know, let's just give the page number. I want it to be as easy as possible. So it's on page 393 in the Bibles that was handed out to you. Now, I feel a little bit, um, you know, when Waxer, um, we were chatting this week, he said, Paul, you can preach on whatever you want. And I thought, you know what? It's almost like cheating to preach on Psalm, right? Because Psalm is so good. It's like, okay, right, the guest speaker is going to preach on Psalm. But what I want to do this morning is this passage of Scripture is so powerful for me because this is what I'm living in right now. Many times when, when a guest speaker comes into a church, you hear all these incredible stories because of all these years of ministry, and they give you these highlight stories that are so incredible. And the one thing about me is I love to live in the here and the now, in the moment. And so even this morning, I'm going to share a story with you from River of Life about a young man named Paka that actually happened two days ago at River of Life Mission. But as I was getting ready to preach here at One Love, I was thinking, God, what have you been doing in my life? What have you been doing at River of Life Mission? And it is that God has been performing so many miracles. So what I wanna share with you this morning is the miraculous, God's power on display. And that's what we're gonna look at this morning. The passage we're looking at is Psalm 77. Now, it's a really easy one to remember, right? Because I love the number seven. We talk about the number seven all the time, used through God's word, the number of perfection. And even better than that is this is a double seven, seven, right? So Psalm 77. And my hope is if you may not remember anything that I share this morning, and that's okay, but if you remember where I took you in God's word, that's a win in my book. Is that right? So Psalm 77. If any of you guys are uh, love surfing, one of my favorite surfers, Felipe Toledo, his number is 77. Felipe is a good friend of mine. He's being mentored by one of my best friends who's a pastor in San Clemente, California. Felipe believes in Jesus Christ, loves Jesus Christ. He's a number 77. So Psalm 77 is where we're going to be this morning. And what I want to do is I want to read to you verse 14. Now, that one's easy to remember as well, because if you add seven and seven together, you get 14. So this morning, our key verse is Psalm 77, verse 14. And it says this, You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your strength among the peoples. And then the start of verse 15, by your power, you have redeemed your people. Amen? That is the God, the miraculous God that we serve. You are the God who works wonders. Some of your versions may say right there, instead of wonders, miracles. You are the God who works wonders. You are the God who works miracles. You have made known your strength among the people. By your power, you have redeemed your people, which ultimately points to Jesus Christ, amen? And we're gonna look at this full passage this morning. Now again, this is something that I'm sharing with you this morning that I have been living in at River of Life Mission. Many of you have heard or known about River of Life Mission, and it was two years ago we were ministering primarily just in Chinatown, but we made a decision to go all mobile and to start going all around the island. And the idea was that if we were gonna make a significant 
dent in this homeless situation, primarily love people that are living in the desperation of the streets, we had to involve more people in this work to minister to people on the streets. And so we decided to, to flip to this hub model where we were actually raising up local churches and families and even some businesses run hubs with us now that have a heart for the homeless in their own community. And can I tell you that the last year, last year when I was here sharing, I actually looked at my notes from One Love last year, and when I shared with you, we had over 60 hubs around Oahu. Isn't that incredible? That was last year, amen? Well, let me show you the map for this year now. We have, it says 79, but now we have 83 hubs around Oahu. Is that not awesome? Praise God. And then one of the things I love, leave this slide up for just a minute, because when we were previously just in Chinatown, now this is all about the multiplication, right? And that was the idea to decentralize and to multiply the number of people ministering to people living in the desperation of the streets. But before we flipped to go mobile, each week we would offer, you know, several ministry components to people living on the streets. Because of the multiplication of the hubs, see the number under it, and actually right now we're at over 360 ministry and wraparound social services every week because of the hubs and the explosion of the hubs. So you guys, we are living in the miraculous. We are living this season where God is moving in miraculous ways. The biggest thing, you guys, is one of the things I said when I came into River of Life Mission for 35 years, we'd been so focused on the meals, right? Which is a powerful thing, and God had led a lot of life change because of that. But I said, I wanna be more focused on transitions. I want everything we do to point towards getting people off the streets. Last year, we transitioned 109 people off the streets. Isn't that amazing? And I praise God for that. 26 of those, we actually reunited with their blood biological family. One guy with his family in North Carolina, I think I shared a story last year about a guy in Las Vegas. We reunited a guy from an Indian reservation in Wyoming back with his family in his Indian reservation. You guys, God has been moving and people's lives are being changed. God has been working miraculously in and through River of Life Mission. And you know what, you guys? It is all about God. I'm not even smart enough to do something like this. All these people have been coming up and like, Paul, what, what'd you do? I'm like, God, that's what happened. I'm a surfer. I was born in Papua New Guinea, man. I don't even know how to do something like this. It never been done. Do you guys know that we're a part of a network called CityGate? where there's 325, listen to that number, from Canada, US, Caribbean, we're part of a network of 325 Christ-centered missions. Listen to that just for a minute. I'm not talking publicly government-funded missions. We're talking Christ-centered missions. That's awesome. And not one of them is mobile like we are. There was no model there was no, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit this morning, but that's why I know it was a miracle of God, what God is doing. But before we read this full passage of Psalm 77, I wanna introduce you this morning to a young man named Paca. Paca was a man that was around the mission for 25 years. For 25 years, he came into the mission and he received meals and they talked to him about Jesus Christ. He had come into relationship with Jesus Christ, but then the isolation and the desperation of the streets kept him on the streets. He went in and out of jail and was on the streets for 25 years. There are people on staff at River of Life Mission that remember Paca from 25 years ago. Well, last week, because of our hubs, not in town, but some of our hubs in Wahiwa, a woman by the name of Trisha, who leads one of our hubs, ran into Paca and said, Paca, you gotta get off the streets. The streets are gonna kill you. And I believe Jesus has a better life for you. 
And you know what Paca said to Trish? He said, you're right, and I'm ready. Well, one of the things we found with people on the streets is usually it's not one person that can help somebody on the streets. It takes many people to help somebody because there's so many dynamics. So Trish, Trish started pulling in the other hubs in Wahiwa, and all of a sudden it was four hubs that were helping Paca get transitioned. And then Trish called us at River of Life Mission. And my good friend Blake, who's on staff with us at River of Life Mission, jumped in on it and started. And it was this group of people trying to help Paca get his life back together. Praise God. Amen. After 25 years. And Blake calls an incredible ministry in Kauai called U-Turn for Christ. And U-Turn for Christ makes a decision that they'll take Paca in for a one-year discipleship program. And then what's even crazier is Blake takes him down to the airport and gets him through TSA with no ID. A lot of people don't know you can actually get somebody on a flight, and we found that out with no ID. Gets him through TSA. But in the last two months, you guys, we've had one hub right here at Harbor Church, who's one of our amazing hubs, got a man all the way to the airport through TSA to go on a flight to a one-year discipleship program on the continental U.S., and he never got on the flight. And we still don't know where he is. On Thursday morning, this Thursday morning, just three days ago, this Thursday morning, I walked into the mission, and I said, Blake, Paca got on the plane last night, and Blake put his head down, and he said, Paca didn't get on the plane. And Blake said he was supposed to get on the first flight this morning, and he didn't get on the first flight this morning. And I'm going to leave it there till the end of the service, and I'm going to tell you about what happened with Paca, okay? But we'll get there. I'm going to leave you on the cliffhanger, hanging in there with me, all right? Okay, so open up your Bibles to Psalm 77, and let's read the full chapter this morning. And this morning, if you're taking notes, I want to give you four main points from Psalm 77 on the miraculous. And then I'm going to give you four points that are like a case study of what God has done at River of Life Mission. So really, in all, there's going to be eight points, but the first four are the main ones I really want you to catch, and then the second four are just for fun, all right? But it's a case study of what God has done at River Life Mission. But let's go ahead and read Psalm 77. I'm reading from the New American Standard, um, but we're going to point out one other version when we get to verse 10. So if if any of you have the NIV, I want you to really uh, hang tight with me on that until we get to verse 10. Here we go, Psalm 77, verse 1. This psalm was written by one of three worship leaders, right? So there were three worship leaders. So this is actually written by a worship leader. We were led in amazing worship this morning. The first song, as a man, I still don't know how you guys clap and sing at the same time. Amen? Any other guys with me on this? I'm sitting over there, and I'm trying to clap, and I'm like, I can't even do it. So... You guys are amazing, praise God. All right, here we go. So this is a psalm from a worship leader, verse one, Psalm 77. My voice rises to God and I will cry aloud. My voice rises to God and he will listen to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. In the might of my hand was stretched out and did not grow weary. My soul refused to be comforted. When I remember God, then I'm restless. When I sigh, then my spirit feels weak. You have held my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of long ago. I will remember my song in the night. I will meditate with my heart and my spirit ponders. So interesting here in verse seven. The one thing I want to point out is this passage is such a powerful passage, but it also speaks to any of us that could be going through a challenging time. Anytime you're in a challenging season, you can look back at this psalm and be ministered to because 
all of us go through challenging seasons. And you might be even somebody in a challenging season right now. And even this passage speaks to you. But then it turns a corner and moves into the miraculous. Verse 7, he says, Will the Lord reject forever? Question mark. And will he never be favorable again? Question mark. Has his favor ceased forever? Has his promise come to an end forever? Has God forgotten to be gracious? This guy is digging deep. What is going on here? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Verse 9. Or has he even goes to this place? Or has he in anger withdrawn even his compassion from me? Question mark. Verse 10. There's a shift that takes place in verse 10 that is so important. Verse 10, then I said. Anybody that has the NIV, what is, just shout out. Last night a guy just shouted out, I loved it. In the NIV, what are the first three words of verse 10? Then I thought, okay? So I love that one because because they both go hand in hand, right? Because you typically don't say something if you didn't think it first, right? But this, this songwriter, this worship leader, he's, he's at first going, man, my life is in this place of desperation. And God, where are you? Have you literally like abandoned me? But then all of a sudden, verse 10 is this radical change where he goes, then I thought. And then more powerfully, then I said, so we now have it in scripture, verse 10, then I, then I thought, then I said, it is my grief that the right hand of the most high has, what? Has changed. I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. I will certainly remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on your work and your deeds with thanksgiving. Your way, God, is holy. What God is like, our God. Amen? And verse 14, you are the God who works wonders. Some of your translations, I think the NIV says miracles. You are the God who works miracles. Amen? That is the God we serve. You are the God who works wonders. You are the God who works miracles. You have made known your strength among the people, by your power, you have redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, the waters, verse 16. This is what we've been living in for 10 days in Hawaii. I was reading this this week again in preparation for this morning. I was like, oh my gosh. So listen to this. This is what we've been living in with Hawaii. It's so ironic, but that's how God works. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you. They were in anguish. The ocean depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water. <laughs> Isn't that what we've been living in? So ironic. The clouds poured out water. The skies sounded out. Your arrows flashed here and there. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the mighty waters. And your footprints were not known. Yet you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Four points that I want to talk about this morning from these verses. Verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 77 is we have to acknowledge that we live in a world that's full of pain. It's full of suffering and hard things. And we have to acknowledge for all of us that there's always going to be times in our life where things are hard and challenging. But in verses 1 to 9, to nine the first point this morning is those things, praise God, are always temporary. Amen? Temporary. Especially when we're in eternity with God our Father. Amen? All pain, all suffering, all sin all questioning will be gone. 
Our first point this morning is that the miraculous does not come from temporal thinking. The miraculous does not come from temporal thinking and the pain and the heartache is temporary. Do we have to live in it sometimes? Absolutely. And it's important to mourn, right? But we have to remember that all those things that cause pain and suffering in this world are temporal. And I think what's so interesting in this passage, even the worship artist that is writing this in verse 10, he says, but then I had to stop and think. And then I said, and he rolls into from verse 10 on this powerful acknowledgement and promise that our God is a mighty God of miracles. Amen. So number one is the miraculous does not come from temporal thinking. Number two in verses 10 through 13 is the miraculous comes from remembering who God is. If you notice on the slide for the title this morning, I put that the title of this morning's message is the miraculous, God's power on display. When I was doing youth ministry for 13 years with 800 kids in our youth ministry, it was a massive youth ministry. And every time I would preach, I would say, but there's one big idea I wanna give you this morning. And you know what, as I got further in my walk in teaching in front of people, I thought, what am I doing, Paul? This isn't a big idea. This is a big truth, right? This isn't just an idea that I wanted to convey to young people. This isn't just a big idea that Pastor Paul came up with. This is a big truth that's in God's word. And in Psalm 77, point number two in our message this morning is that the miraculous comes from remembering the truth of who God is because it says it in his word. Number three this morning is the miraculous is how God shows himself among people his people, verses 14 and 15. And then point number four is the miraculous is God at work in me and in you. And that's what I wanna focus on this morning. Isn't it interesting that at the end of it, point number four, that the miraculous is God at work in and through you. And at the very end of this Psalm, Who are the two names that are mentioned? It's Moses and Aaron. Now, if you remember Moses in Exodus chapter 4.10, I think this is so interesting. Do you remember in Exodus chapter 4 verse 10, Moses says to God, God, please don't use me. He says this, he says, oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. This is a man in honesty that says, God, there's no way you can use me because I can't even talk. Yet God chooses to use Moses. You know what I think is even funnier? Is if you read on in the verses after in Exodus 4.10 and beyond, do you remember who Moses tries to point God to? He tries to point God to Aaron. This is so classic. I don't don't know. I mean, when I was reading this, I was like, this is so funny because at the end of this Psalm 77, this powerful passage about God working miracles, the Bible chooses, God chooses you through this worship leader, Moses and Aaron, the guy that says, God, don't use me. And And in fact, don't use me because I can't even talk. Use Aaron. Well, if you know Aaron's life, a quick summary on Aaron's life, God did use Aaron, but then he neglected to steer God's people away from sin and then built a golden calf that God's people could worship. But God still used Moses and Aaron for miraculous things, and God can still use us no matter who we are, no matter what things we've been through, the failings, the flaws, all that, I'm one of those. I'm one of those guys. I am failed and flawed to the core. But in God's word, he promises that he can even use Paul Gates. 
and he can even use you. Point number four this morning is the miraculous is God at work in and through you. This morning, what I also wanted to do is I did want to do a little bit of what I call a case study. And I want to give you four more points of how we've seen God miraculously work through River of Life mission. You can write these down or just take them in. I hope that you really reflect on the first four points directly in line with Psalm 77. Look at them again later. But here's the four things that we've seen at River Life Mission, especially over the last two years. Number one is that the miraculous always starts with prayer. The miraculous always starts with prayer. Prayer has always been one of the main focuses of River of Life Mission. When we decided to transition and go all mobile, nobody had ever done it before, and I was freaked out to the core. But the one thing we did is we opened up a prayer room at the mission. We had a little sign-up board on the wall, and it was open for staff, board members, volunteers, anybody in the community that just wanted to pray for us. And we had this little checkout thing where you could come in and just put the hours that you prayed, and we filled that room up for months with people coming in and praying that God would miraculously move through this new endeavor of going mobile, and God has responded. So the thing that we've seen in this case study of River Life Mission is that the miraculous always starts with prayer. Number two, the miraculous is about writing things down and talking to people. Now, this is an interesting point. For some reason, when we flipped to go mobile, I told the staff, Let's just, all of us, myself and all of us as staff, Tomiko, you were there. I said, let's just write things down and then let's talk story with other people just about what we think God might be doing through this mobile thing, right? Let's write things down, see what God's downloading to us, and then let's get out there and just talk with people and and see what God stirs up. And so I truly believe this morning that God used that And point number two under this case study, River Life Mission, is the miraculous is found in writing things down and talking with other people about what God might be doing. So interesting that this week, again, one of our young staff members, he's 24 years old. He has his master's from Pensacola Bible College. I'm so blessed that we were able to bring Eddie on staff. He's been such a godsend of the mission. He said, Pastor Paul, The other day I was reading Habakkuk 2 verse 2. And I said, well, what does that say? And he says, Habakkuk 2 2 says, then the Lord answers me and said, write down the vision and inscribe it clearly on tablets so that the one who reads it may what? May run, may run. That is powerful. Write it down. Write it down, put the vision down. Don't just keep it in here. Write it down and see what God could do. And you guys, I truly believe that the miraculous has been found at River of Life Mission because we've chosen to write things down, number one. And number two, get out there and talk story and see what God could do. This morning and even last night, I wanted to encourage us all that we live in a watch world. Okay? I'm not talking about a watch. We live in a, a watch world where we watch. We watch TV. We watch movies. We watch social media almost like they're movies, right? Sometimes we just start scrolling on social media and all of a sudden you've watched a two-hour movie on social media, right? We live in a watch world. And I want to encourage us, instead of living in a watch world, let's live in a write world. Let's live in where we write things down. Let's get a journal like old school. Let's write things that God is giving us in vision on our computers. Let's write things down and see what God can do. God does not move when we're living in a watch world. When we're watching something on television, when we're watching a movie, when we're watching, scrolling through social media, God is not moving in that. But when we write things down that God has 
shooting into our hearts and minds and see what God can do. Miracles will happen when we write things down. And talking with one another. I saw a survey recently that I thought was so interesting. They pulled a bunch of teenage girls together. I think the group was in the hundreds. They pulled hundreds of teenage girls together and they actually kind of wired them up and, and did some studies. I don't know how they do all these studies, it's way beyond me, but they did this study on teenage girls and it was the difference of when their mother came in and physically talked to them versus when their mother texted them on a phone. Listen to this, this is so interesting. And I gotta read it to make sure I get some of these words right. But here's this study. On all the teenagers, when they heard their mom's voice, the level of oxytocin, which is the love hormone, increased. And cortisol, the stress hormone, decreased. That was when the mom physically talked to these teenagers. The study showed that the oxytocin levels, the love hormone increased and the cortisol, the stress hormone decreased. But with texting, it was the exact opposite. Now, this is so interesting to me. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know if, if maybe texting there is, I don't know, maybe, I, I don't even know. I don't even, I don't, but this is just a study, right? And what they found with texting is it had the opposite effect. It actually, when the mom texted a daughter, it increased cortisol, the stress hormone, and decreased oxytocin, the love hormone. And in the study, at the end of it, they said, let's use our voices, not our thumbs, amen? <laughs> let's use our voices, not our thumbs. I don't know why, but God just led me when we started considering transitioning to go mobile. I said, our team, let's write things down. What God is showing me, what God's showing Jeremy, what's God showing Chevy, what's God showing Tracy, what's God showing Blake. Let's write things down and then let's get out there and just talk with people and see what God could stir up. And I truly believe that because of writing things down and talking story with one another, God has brought radical miracles to River of Life mission. Number three, the miraculous has a bold vision of can do. The miraculous has a bold vision of can do. When I first came to our staff and told them some of the things I felt like God was giving me a vision to go all over the island, I am telling you, the idea of it all was so radically different than what we had done for 35 years. I'm sure there's some staff sitting out there going, Paul Gates has lost his mind. There is no way. Tomiko, you were in some of those meetings. I'm sure you probably thought that. Like, Paul is, is nuts. He's gone crazy. But you know what? Tomiko, as well as our entire staff, maintained a heart and attitude of can do. We can do this. And to this day, our staff has maintained this heart and attitude of can do that has led us to, three, or to 83 hub spots and 360 and beyond ministry services being extended all over this island every single week. Last year, we had 7,000 volunteers with River of Life Mission. 7,000, it's the miraculous multiplication of what God is doing. The miraculous has a bold vision of can do. And then number four, as we close this morning, I wanna encourage you with one last thing. And that is I wanna answer one final question with you this morning. And that is why is this message important today. Why is this message important for, for me? And why is this message important for you? This is a question in talking to, to men and women that teach 
all around the world is we have to answer the question for people, why is this important today? And if we miss answering that question, I think we miss something huge as we're looking at God's word and looking at what God wants to do through his people. Why is this important for us today? Point number four in this case study of River of Life mission is that the miraculous is almost always a group effort. The miraculous is almost always a group effort. Why is this important for today? If you look in Luke chapter five, if you wanna turn there, you can. I'm gonna wanna look at Luke chapter five, verses 17 to 20, and then also Mark chapter two, verses three to five. You could go to either one of those and you're gonna see the same story and you're gonna see it line up. But I wanna share with you this morning out of Luke chapter five and Mark chapter two, I think the two most powerful verses in all of scripture for the church. Now that is a huge statement because if you think about all of Paul's books that he wrote, all the letters to the church, I'm talking, you know, Paul who wrote a third of the Bible. I'm talking about that these two verses in, chapter, in Luke chapter five and Mark chapter two are the most powerful verses in all of scripture for the church. But it answers the question, why is this important for us today? In Luke chapter five and in Mark chapter two, you see the story that I wanna read to you right now from Luke chapter five, verses 17 to 20. You could also follow along in Mark chapter two, verses three to five. If you're there, great, or you can just listen as I read it. One day Jesus was teaching and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. The power of the Lord was present for Jesus to perform healing. Verse 18 in Luke chapter five. And some men were carrying a man on a stretcher who was paralyzed and they were trying to bring him in and set him down in front of Jesus. But when they did not find any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof. I love this, such a powerful story. They go up on the roof and they peel the roof back or whatever it looked like in that day and they let this man down through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd and they land him right in front of Jesus. I mean, number one, how did they even pull that off? I wanna do a little object lesson with you this morning. We're not gonna have time for that. But how did they even pull it off? Because it was a group effort, amen? It's the four ropes of compassion, I call it. It was if one person was trying to do that, it would have been a failed mission. But four men all took a rope and a corner to put this man down in front of Jesus. But look at verse 20. And if you're in Mark chapter two, look at verse five. But reading from Luke chapter five, verse 20. Our Bible, God's word says this. They put the man down in front of Jesus and it says, and Jesus seeing his faith, seeing their faith, this is huge. This is huge. This is why this morning, why is this important for us today? The Bible says, and Jesus seeing their faith, healed the man, healed the man. Why is this so powerful, you guys? In the line of work that I do in ministering to people on the streets, people living in the isolation and the desperation of the streets, people living in chronic homelessness, there are many times, and I'm just being really honest with you, that I, sometimes I look and I say, you know what, why can't they just get themselves out of this? 
Why, why can't they just, there's so many beds available, right? There's so many transition homes available. We have one called Hope Center over in Kailua that right now has 10 beds open. Why aren't those 10 beds filled? There's beds open at one-year discipleship programs here in Hawaii, continental US. And sometimes I'm like, why don't they just, why don't they just pick themselves up? Why don't they get into a bed? Why don't they get into a discipleship home? Why don't they get a job? but it is by my faith and your faith that people are healed. This is the whole point of it. Number four that I told you, River of Life Mission, the case study is that the miraculous is a group effort. It is a group effort and Jesus even says it's because of their faith that he is healed. So many times we have friends that are hurting. So many times we have friends that don't know Jesus. Maybe in this story, right, that man didn't have faith yet, right? So maybe it was their faith that ignited his faith. Praise God for that. But it's our faith that raises people up out of the ashes and brings miraculous healing in their lives. That is the call of the church. That's why I believe these two verses are the most powerful verses in all of scripture for the church. It is because of our faith that people will be healed. That's the call of the church. This morning I wanna close and actually show you a video of our brother Paca. After Blake told us he didn't get on the plane the night before, he didn't get on the plane in the morning, we had 6.30 prayer time at the mission, we prayed for Paca. Then I went up to my office and all of a sudden Blake, who had got him to the airport, one of our staff guys walked in my office and he stood in my door and he started to weep. He's like, I just can't believe it. We put so much work into this. And I was sitting at my desk and I go, Blake, I know you'd be up to pray again. And he goes, yep, let's pray again. I stood up. We stood in the door of my office and it wasn't a long prayer because we just had to rely. It, the only way that Paco was gonna get to Kauai is God, only way. It wasn't gonna be through the hubs. It wasn't gonna be through us at River of Life Mission. It was only gonna be God because we didn't know if he had gone... I mean, he missed a flight at night. Where did he go at night? Did he stay in the airport? I don't even know if he can stay in the airport. Did he go out of the airport and end up on the streets again? And people end up on the streets again, you don't see him. The guy from Harbor Church, it was months ago that we took him to the airport. We haven't seen him since. I said, Blake, let's pray. And we stood in the doorway of my office and it was a simple prayer. And we just literally said, God, the only way he's getting there is you. Only way is you but it was a group effort, right? It was a crazy group effort. But God, ultimately the miracle belongs to you. And if you can do it, we're gonna believe in you and trust you to do it. At 10.13, I know the time because I keep looking back at it. On this Thursday morning, we're not talking weeks ago, years ago, we're talking this Thursday morning at 10.13 a.m., I got a text message from Blake that Paca made it to Kauai. Amen? Total miracle of God. And now as we close, I wanna just show you a video now. And part of this video, it's, it's videotaping Paca on the streets of Chinatown as he meets with some staff that have known him for 25 years. It's really hard to hear the, vo the audio there. This is fresh audio. So we're gonna have somebody try and extract his words out of the noise a little bit better. But just listen closely, but turn your attention to the screens and we'll close looking at what God has done for Paca. Aloha, my name is Paul Gates. Uh, this is Blake, River of Life Mission. And we are so excited. We had a transition that just happened today. We couldn't wait to tell you. It's about a guy named Paca that's been around the mission for many, many years, but Blake's going to fill in the gaps of kind of how it happened because it was, yeah, it was miraculous. So yeah, Blake, tell them how it happened. Yeah, the, the, the thing that we're celebrating the most is that Paca is in Kauai right now at U-Turn for Christ with Pastor Keone, but it was quite an effort collectively to make it happen. 
Paca was in and out of jail and addiction for over 20 years, mm -hmm. got a, a bad record, what made him really difficult to make the transition. But what was amazing, he was staying up in Wahiwa and Trish um, from our sister's keeper, really just invested with Paca, built a relationship, tried to transition him in the past, and it kind of fell through, it killed her, but he wasn't quite ready. And then he reached back out and, you know, multiple hubs in the Wahiwa area, no mm -hmm. Paca, um, Randy from Share Our Savior, Uncle Barry from Kaneohe Calvary Chapel, and then, of course, uh, he ended up over at New Beginnings with Kay Howe. Uh, she housed him for a couple days, and then we were able to get him through TSA without an ID, get everything on the up and up, came by the mission, got a couple meals, mm. and he got to say hello to old friends. And, yeah. and man, yeah, Pastor Keone is just crushing it over there with Paca, and they grew up together in Waimanalo, and it's just a, a huge testimony of the small network, world, yeah. how small the island is, and how big the kingdom is. So And how big God is. And, and we were praying this morning because... There was a couple of flights canceled and a missed flight or whatever. We're like, God, just get him there. And God got him there. And so here's a couple more videos of Paca and just celebrating that he is in a one-year discipleship program on Kauai. See, let's see what God does. Uh, everything we have done and uh, bringing me to you and a new start to yeah. this um, program in Kauai yeah. and for all these people that went help me too and uh just bringing me here is a blessing that i did a second chance to life father all the people that i never thought that cared about me wrong wrong because i used to pick on this guy all the time before when i was in a disease father and asked him for forgive me yes, for the wrongs i've done and, and uh, they actually will love me and i pray for Thanks, Paul. Uh, you guys, if you could just leave that photo up there. Isn't that an amazing photo? Amen. That's Paca in Kauai. I think he's having a pancake breakfast with the pastors and team from U-Turn for Christ. Ah. Oh. Isn't that what it's all about? Oh, man. In the audio there on, on his right as you're looking at the screen was Chevy who's been in the mission for 27 years. She's known Paca for 25 years. Eleni, um, local guy behind Paca. I don't know if you heard in there because Eleni has done ministry into the prison system for years and still does. At one point in that video, Paca actually apologizes to Eleni. He says, you guys were there for me all along. And Eleni, I'm sorry because you were there with me even in prison. And then he even says, and I wanna thank everybody who helped me get to this place. And do you guys know that last night at your church, One Love, a guy met me right over by the door and he goes, I know Paca from 25 years ago, why and I? And I said, brother, connect with me. I'm gonna connect you with Paca and you can walk with him as he goes through this one-year discipleship program. Amen, you guys. Praise God. The miraculous, so much I've given you this morning, but the miraculous happens when we rise up in prayer. When we realize that the hard things going on in our life are temporary, but God wants to use us to do miracles. And the most powerful verses, I believe, in all of Scripture for the church is it was because of their faith that God worked miracles. Even right now, as we pray, I'm going to give an invitation to accept Jesus. And as we talk about just talk with one another, sometimes I think it can be so simple that if there's somebody sitting around you that maybe is new at One Love, it's okay. It's okay, you can reach out and just touch them on the shoulder and say, hey, do you know Jesus? Even this morning, 
I was thinking, and I even said this last night, maybe it's somebody that you've known at one love for a long time, but you just don't know if they know Jesus. What, what, what's it gonna hurt? You're not gonna text them, right? You're just gonna reach out and touch them and say, do you know Jesus? Last night at the service, we had seven people accept Jesus Christ for the very first time. Gary and I were talking about it. There was a, a young family right over in this, right in the second row. And it was, it, it was so beautiful. I was telling my wife on the drive home. And it was a dad and a mom and two young children, about seven and 10. And I saw some hands through the audience. And all of a sudden I looked over and the two children, seven and 10, were out of their seat with their hands up. I accepted Jesus Christ. And then right behind them was the mom. Amen? Such a blessing. So let's close in prayer. And as we go out, remember that God wants to work miraculously through you. But many times it is what? It's a group effort. And that is the call of the church that it's because of our faith that miracles will happen in this world. Amen. Let's pray. Aloha, I'm Cindy, and I'm one of the ministry leaders here at One Love. I also happen to be married to one of the most handsome pastors here on staff. Do I get points for that, Waxer? Anyway, I want to say thank you for tuning in today. We hope that you were inspired and strengthened with today's celebration. If you're new to One Love, we encourage you to visit us online at onelove.org and fill out a connect card so we can keep you up to date with all the things happening here. While you're there, you can also learn more about One Love, submit prayer requests, or see more of our studies through the Bible. There are many ways to stay connected, so we encourage you to take the first step. If you are watching today's celebration via YouTube, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to keep informed with new messages. Most importantly, if you have made a decision to follow Christ today, we encourage you to click on our I Said Yes to Christ link at the bottom of our website and fill out the form so we can stay connected. Or call us at 955-9335 and let us pray with you. Our ministry leaders are ready to serve you. One last thing, if you want to learn more about the good news of Jesus Christ, we encourage you to visit goodnewshawaii.com. There, you will find five short videos about living a life in Christ and a free discipleship booklet designed to encourage your faith. Mahalo for tuning in to One Love Today. We hope that you are blessed by our time together. Aloha.